Thank you, John, for the kind words. Good evening, distinguished guests, fellow members, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you for coming tonight. It's a real honor for me to be the first CFC president from the Hong Kong branch. And I'm delighted that several members from Hong Kong are actually joining us here. As the new CFC president, I would like to take a few minutes to outline my visions for the institutions the coming year. I would like to start by posing a question. Is engineering art? This statue manifests determination, beauty, and potent strength. It is also structural sound and demonstrates perfect profession, pro proportions. We call it a piece of art. Look at this. A structure built for a purpose. A venue awaiting to display or spotting strength. It is also structural sound and is striking commensurate loading curves. If it is not an image of David manifesting determination and potent strength, what is it? But why don't we call it art? In Sipsi, we think it is art. In our charter, we say we exist to support the science, art, and practice of building service engineering. But surely, if we get the science and practice right, what does the art matter? And if the problem is solved and the solution works, what does art have to do with it? The answer is that the artistry brings our work innately alive and vibrant. Well, I would like to argue that for engineering professions, art is the most important word in that sentence. There are many building service engineering projects that could illustrate to my point well. I shall first look at some winners of the CIPC Building Performance Award. The International Commerce Center in Hong Kong is an impressive example. The building is 2.5 million square feet of office and hotel spaces, is about 1,600 feet high, divided over 110 plus floors. Many thousands of people live, work, and play there day in and day out. I shall skip the scientific and practical skill you took to build, to, to build the world's seventh tallest buildings, as that is obvious. But day in and day out, the building's tenants are engaged in creating a sustainable environment. Food waste is collected, and condensation from the air handling units is used to flush the toilets. From the design to its operations, the mission of the building service engineers involved was to create a living, breathing building that works alongside its occupants. The other recent award winner, the University of Bradford, is a double winner of the CIPC Building Performance Champion Award. The estate was mostly built in the 60s and early 70s and delivered only suboptimal performance for many years. But by turning up the rule book on what we thought was appropriate with all the buildings, the skills of building service engineers deliver the only university campus in the world with three beamed outstanding buildings and a passive house building award within 100 meters of each other. The completed project has rejuvenated the campus and the art of engineering is spread across the whole university. It is not, not merely functional, it goes above and beyond to help generations of young people flourish and develop in a positive learning environment for years to come. Art is often about making a breakthrough, not merely a successful copy. Safety members are ready and prepared to go beyond what we thought was possible. Let's look at another example. The gardens by the Bay Project in Singapore 
which won a Sip C Building Performance Award in 2014, demonstrates exceptionally what can be achieved by marrying science, practice, and art. The project is impressive scientifically because it has enormous structural towers called super trees, which carry out functions from heat dissipation to power generation within its integrated systems. It is impressive, practically, because botanical gardens recreate a Mediterranean springtime with mild, dry days and cool nights in a city that neighbors the equator. These two factors alone make it a remarkable project. But the hidden heart is that it uses no more power than an average Singaporean office block. Yes, it was about building a city inside a, bit, a city. The other example, on the other hand, is a city outside a city. The Dutch city of Amsterdam, where the municipal administration preserved the artistic ambience of inner city while deploying a huge array of futuristic technologies for the benefit of the residents, including rainwater recycling, demand responsive street lighting, and integration of transport and logistic management while keeping computers living outside the city ring road. In a way, the principle behind the Amsterdam smart city and are the same as the one behind the Beijing stadium, but from a different aspe aspect. They are both designed to create a high performance project, which is at once a functional and a piece of structures. Both the Bradford and Amsterdam projects show us that our existing building stock can be sustainable. Both the International Commerce Center and Gardens by Bay projects go well beyond statutory requirement. The reason we marvel the art of Michelangelo's statue, Picasso's paintings, and Mozart's symphonies is because they are alive. Each encounter them brings us fresh sensations and different meanings. They are still alive, irrespective of the age. The four projects I've talked about are recognized examples of SIPSI members' engineering skill. Creating beautiful environments and experience for the people who live, work, learn, and play in them. Each day, millions of people benefit from SIPSI members' commitment to professional standards and serving the public good. In addition to the technical skill we have learned, all these examples demonstrate the art of the building service engineering profession. What marks this project out as extraordinary is not just the undoubtedly impressive engineering it took to create them, but the way that the core values of engineers were upheld throughout, prestige, professionalism, and public interest. Back to where I'm from, construction has transformed Hong Kong beyond recognition since I first started work there. It becomes a beautiful urban jungle of towers. But not all changes have been good. The urban environment is less than healthy. The air is still and thick. If building service engineers were allowed to emulate these awards winning projects more often, then the skyline of Hong Kong would remain as beautiful as it is, <coughs> but the health of the city which would be much improved. So our engineers, artists, this question is a tough one. Imagine me asking other people these questions. What they would see is a dull and boring person. You will never get any answer except why you ask such a stupid question. Luckily, you are not as dull as boring as I am. I'm half through the speech, and you are not even bored. <laughs> Seriously, the art part lies within our practice and fueled by our core values and beliefs. We need to tell others we are artists 
and explained why we call ourselves that. And now is the time to do so. Picasso never hid that he was a cubist. And Dani never, he was the surrealist. Artists are proud of their movements and believe that their principles can change the world. And we need to borrow some of the inspiration and apply it to our roles as building service engineers. We should tell others art can be more than ornamental. It can also, also be functional as well in the form of building and built environment. The functional aspect often hidden away are actually the most creative work an engineer will do in the careers. In my presidential year, it's my aim to celebrate and elevate the exceptional work that our members do to inspire. The CIPC promotes the art and science of building services. We are engineers. We talk about science and we practice art. The art of collaborations, intuitions, inventions, and creative thinking to challenge and inspire the public and each other. I'm extremely proud to be a CIBS fellow and child engineer. I think it's important that we understand the difference between between our child engineers and corporate engineers and engineering technicians in the UK and the registration process commonly found elsewhere. In the UK, CNG, ING, and tech are a status that the engineering profession is proud of, that the public respects, and that is a value in the industry. And the status implies acceptance of professional values. In many places in Wales, registr registration is often just a license to practice. The legal minimum required to be allowed to work as an engineer. The UK system embraced a person who is ready to take on professional responsibility and the liability of more practice. It is personal. It marks the professionals out because of quality we aspire to and the values of professionalism we commit to uphold in addition to basic compliance standards and safeguarding of public interest. A license of practice on our hand often merely relies on successful attainment of some entry requirements. One may argue that the license also penalizes the more practice, but it's only after more practice a court and offenders are caught and punished. Professionalism is about instilling integrity in an engineer that prevent them even thinking about more practice in the first place. As a charter institution, CIPC helps define and protect those values in principle of professionalism. Membership is one of the key pillars of the 2020 vision because everything that CIPC does for the industry, for the public, and for the engineering at large flows from the strength of our membership. It is the members who are the experts that are delivering new knowledge sharing guidance and introducing new expertise. It is the members who go out in the world and apply the knowledge that we publish for the good of society. More importantly, we are willing to share our knowledge and expertise worldwide. The knowledge portal is one of our best assets because it allows anyone who has an interest in SIPSI anywhere in the world to benefit from and to contribute to Sipsi wider knowledge offering. The language of engineering has no boundaries, and Sipsi takes pride in sharing and learning from others. All the better if Sipsi can help those with less developed engineering sectors to springboard to the future of low carbon buildings in the years to come. But despite that, we shouldn't be complacent. Reach out. CIPC and its member can't know everything and be everywhere. And the best way to change that is to bring new members on board around the globe. And with them, to bring in new knowledge about industry, technologies, regions and market that can ensure that we are king over the deepest and most diverse pool of knowledge. 
Of course, we don't just exist to distribute guides. We exist to spread what we believe and what we said in the charter. We exist to support the science, art, and practice of building service engineering. My presidential pledge is to inspire the industry to embody the spirit and values of being a SIPSI member and to promote the positive message of the values we believe in, the professionalism we treasure, and the aspiration of exchanging best practice among like-minded professionals worldwide. I'm confident that once this is the caliber of SIPSI members, a growth in membership is inevitable. But I can't do this alone. SIPSI now represents nearly 21,000 members, bring out the art in building services engineering worldwide. I also have the eye on the, the young member network somewhere here around the world. For one thing, they don't look as dull and boring as I do. <laughs> and uh, they, they don't get easily being bored anyway. And they will be our ambassador for many years to come. Building service engineers are one of the most important professions of the future health of the planet. And the world is pretending what we do to ensure that we have healthy and productive places to live and work for generations. Now, I've done my talk. We have to do the walk. Reach out. It's a big world out there. Spread the Sipsi message. Thank you.